power is too sweet to quit. Congo and Rwanda presidents dig in for third term. The counties are mismanaging the healthcare workers. Because of procedures in, in payment of salaries, maybe something was removed. But not all of them. It was not removed across the board. Nakuru Health Strike Day 2. Patients stranded as county government speaks. Kitabo ni, ni tan gari kidogo. Na waiva likuwa hainia. Ume niona, ume niona gari. Something like that. Only. Lafikia tu kuongea tena. Rogue shepherds. Pain left behind by pastors behaving badly. And we want details of the sugar deals. Opposition tells Uhuru after Uganda visit. A very good evening to you. Many thanks for joining us on KTN Prime. I'm Linda Gutu. Our sign language interpreter at the bottom end of your screen is William Siller. Tonight, the spotlight is back on that controversial issue of presidential third term in Africa. Just hours after the Rwandan president got closer to getting a green light to run again, Congolese President Denis Sassou has now sacked two ministers for opposing his third term bid. KTN's Joa Geo begins our coverage tonight with what now appears to be a fashionable quest by African leaders. For 31 years, Denis Sassongeso has straddled the political landscape of the Republic of Congo, albeit in two different spells. He is 71 years old and is required by the constitution of his country to quit by next year after his two terms. But last month, Sassongeso called a national forum to discuss reforms, including raising the maximum age for presidential candidates and scrapping term limits. But now two ministers who opposed the move have been shown the door in a surprise reshuffle in that country. That announcement coincided with a somewhat similar situation in Rwanda, where a parliamentary report now suggests that only 10 people out of Rwanda's 12 million have opposed the proposal to have President Paul Kagame run again in 2017. Earlier in the year, more than 3.7 million Rwandans signed their names on a petition seeking to have Paul Kagame run for another term. <laughs> Debate on presidential term limits has heated up on the continent since U.S. President Barack Obama admonished those seeking to cling to power during his historic address at the AU headquarters. When a leader tries to change the rules in the middle of the game just to stay in office, it risks instability. Regional leaders have since been weighing in on that debate. But if I'm in power for a long time, being elected by the people, that shows that I am a very popular person. If the people themselves decide that they are not desirous of having term limits, you can also not force uh, uh, the issue on term limits to somebody who has said no. 57-year-old Kagame has been in power since 2003 when he overwhelmingly won the presidential election. He's largely credited with being the force behind the Rwanda Patriotic Front that ended the genocide in 1994 and stabilizing the country's economy thereafter. Jogeo, KTN News. The Big Q in association with Thika School of Medical and Health Sciences. Let's stay with that story done by Joe Geo and of course on the clamor for certain by African leaders. We're asking you tonight on KTN Prime, should African presidents be allowed to rule for life? Quite a number of leaders have spoken about this. Remember US President Barack Obama was very categorical that no one should rule for life. That conversation uh, also happened in Uganda um, where President Uhuru Kenyatta is currently on a, on a visit there. So let us know what you think. Should African leaders be allowed to rule for life. You can tweet us at KTN Kenya. You can tweet me as well at Lindo Gutu. Trust me, I'd love to sample your views on that. 
Hospital services remain paralyzed in Nakuru County even as Nakuru County government resolved to involve the labor office to lead talks. The health workers strike has entered its second day with health workers vowing not to relent until they are given their delayed promotions, salary arrears and missing allowances. And as KTN's Kamchemenza now reports, Nakuru Deputy Governor Joseph Ruto says a crisis meeting this morning with the health workers did not bear any fruit. This is Rift Valley Provincial General Hospital, one of the hospitals whose health workers have downed their tools. Patients left without services, some left with no option but to leave the facility. Some wards left empty. And this is the casualty area. Behind me are some of the patients who have come here today to get treatment. On this side is the cashier area, but it's closed clear evidence that there are no operations going on here. Outside this door are more patients who are waiting to be attended. We met a patient whose relatives have opted to transfer him to a private hospital. Tulikuwa tutoka either leo or tomorrow, lakini by yesterday when we came here, tukambua na madaktari kila mutu aende male na jua na mgonjo wake. Tukaenda na kuru afraa matanet, mlikuwa imeja, but by this morning mefitia ni meambiwa, Lillian Atita says she suffers cervical cancer and was meant to have her operation done. Sasa wakati nikuja niki bleed wadi niambia tuwa hizi nitoa kama na bleed. Baka ni iyo bleeding isha. Sasa hizi bleeding imesimamu. Sasa hatuna videneza saidi. Sasa kama madokumenti zangu zote ziku uko ndani. Hata nikiendo hospitali ngine sa hizi hizi pata ni hizi. Their stories are not different from the many others stranded here, just having to bear with the pain. Led by KMPDU National Chair Samuel Oroko, the union issued a strike notice to the county government for failure to implement what they say was agreed in a series of meetings. This is the seventh strike since devolution. And the governor himself promised to have effected all the promotions by June this year. And June went by with no promotion. We have people, arrears are running into hundreds of thousands of shillings. The job groups of people have stagnated. Career progression is stagnating. And at this point, the only thing that keeps us in this poor paying civil service is career progression. So if there's no career progression, why would we serve an undeserving master? The counties are mismanaging the healthcare workers. The counts are not buying drugs in the hospitals. The public is suffering. Corruption is the highest in counties now as we speak. And all this is not addressed with the actions it requires. But according to county government, it will be impossible to meet all the workers' demands immediately. The county says they have tried to do so gradually, such as promoting 144 staff. That is to show we are very much willing to, to do the promotion. The issue of allowances that were removed from the payroll, we shall reinstate for everybody. And that one was human error. We cannot say it was intentional. A meeting between the two sides that saw the county promise to effect promotions in three phases from 1st September, with a rare payment from October, failed to yield a solid pact. We want to forward to labor office to make reconciliation. But until then the fate of the patients hangs in the loose and the pain continues in the Nakuru public health facilities. Kamchemenza, KTN News, Nakuru County.
That's a story we are keeping an eye on for you. And of course, we'll keep an eye on the developments and let you know what's going on there in Nakuru. Now, the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy wants President Uhuru Kenyatta to make public details of the sugar import deal. He signed with President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda. Code leader Raila Odinga says allowing cheap Ugandan sugar imports into the country will kill Kenya's ailing sugar sector. His sentiments were communicated by ODM Secretary General Ababu Namwamba after an ODM meeting. Western Kenyan leaders have also weighed in on the issue, saying it was critical to protect the local sugar industry. As a responsible alternative voice for the people of Kenya, we are giving the president the opportunity to explain this matter to the nation. We have made it absolutely clear that upon receiving the full information, including the response of the president, we will fully and substantively, comprehensively address ourselves to this matter. But we have expressed our shock that if indeed it's true that the president has struck a deal of this nature, it is a matter that would definitely amount to economic sabotage and is a matter that we would address comprehensively upon receiving the full information. The case of Pastor James Nganga's involvement in a deadly car accident is one that has been marred with twists, turns and suspicion. And today Martin Bugwa, who was injured and lost his wife in the accident, speaks out. What may surprise many is that he says he has nothing against the embattled pastor. Sharon Momani reports. <laughs> 26th of July and a grisly accident rudely snatches Martin Jerry from her family. Martin Bugwa, her husband, who was the one driving at the time of the accident, is nursing both the pain of losing a loved one and injuries sustained at the accident. They need a CT scan from here to here because of the leg. So I'm waiting for. I'm waiting to go back to the hospital tomorrow. He vividly recalls the incident, which he says happened in a split second. I remember I saw a lead car coming, just a lead car. Due that I was the one who was driving, I believe my hands were very quick to, to flash the car. And then turning, trying to turn. He also clearly remembers the last sentence he would ever hear from his wife. My wife was coming and I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get more than that. Because it was a matter of less than a minute or a second. The immediate reports from the accident allege that the Range Rover involved in the accident belonged to Pastor James Nganga of the Neno Evangelism Center, but he has refuted these claims. Witnesses spoke of seeing and even speaking to Pastor Nganga at the scene of accident, but this he has denied too. One Mr. Simon Courier presented himself as the driver of the Range Rover in a move that has raised more questions. But Martin is not quick to point fingers. He says he does not know Pastor Nganga. In fact, all he expects is for his insurance cover to cater for his damages and his medical treatment. The people were talking and they told me we had an accident and the car was being driven by, by, by Ms. Pastor Nganga. Nothing more. Me, myself, I don't know Pastor Nganga for myself. I... I have nothing about him. I don't know him actually, because for sure I have never seen him, even the television. I'm not a fan of television. My family have no problem with anybody. Actually, they, they ask me, do you, did your car have the full insurance? Yes. Now, what's the problem? Even I ask my dad, do you have anything to anybody who did the accident? No. Even if my wife passed away, she, Actually, she can't come back. She have gone, she have gone. So it's my life and going, going, going forward. In a report presented to the Director of Public Prosecutions, police recommended that Pastor Nganga be charged with causing death through dangerous driving, failing to report an accident, and driving a vehicle without valid insurance. An internal investigation concluded that officers tampered with evidence. Shalma Mani, KTN News.
The Kenya National Union of Teachers Secretary General Wilson Sosion has maintained that the teacher strike slated for September is still on. Speaking this afternoon in Nairobi, Sosion said that the decision to increase teachers' remuneration was arrived at after meticulous research and therefore it should not be challenged. $3 per day and where do these teachers live? In Island and in the slums. They must commute every day. And then, I am sure, you don't pay a housemaid anything less than 20,000. If at the moment, housemaids and watchmen are earning salaries higher than teachers, surely, can anybody ever dream of quality education? TSC should have written to Parliament, and if they have not written to you, then we have written to you. A letter to the Clerk of the National Assembly requesting a meeting with the Departmental Committee of Education. It is three page. It is clear why we wrote to you was to give you an opportunity to rescue the sector. That is one. Two to tell you why we will not, we will not be in the classroom in, in September. Counseling during holidays, yeah? <laughs> Counseling during holidays, yeah? Not everybody has got the same capacity, yeah? There are people who are slow, but they finally get there. So they must be given opportunity so that teachers can bring them up during the holidays. You're watching KTN Prime. We thank you for staying with us now just hours after Rwandan president got closer to getting a green light to run again. Congolese president has now sacked two of his ministers who opposed his third term bid. And tonight we're asking you, should African presidents be allowed to rule for life? Should African presidents be allowed, allowed to rule for life? Kenya underscore jockey says, if the leader is inducing a great impact and the citizens are in support of him for another term, it is fine. Ahmed Moyo, no, president should rule for life as this undermines, should not rule for life as this undermines democracy and progress that change brings about. And finally, Stephen Juma says, no, let them build strong institutions for true legacies. Taking a short break, we'll be back with more news for you. Stay with KTN. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Let's take you to the coast now. Questions are now emerging on how more than 30 youth in the coast region disappeared mysteriously, never to be traced. Around the period of the holy month of Ramadan, some parents claim some of the youth were arrested by the police but never made it back home. KTN's Francis Ontomwa reports from Mombasa. They try to fight back emotions but their eyes still tell their agony. Their sons and daughters disappeared without a trace. They say they have explored all avenues possible, but each passing day comes with fading hopes. The hopes to see their loved ones, most of them aged between 18 and 30. When the amnesty window was closed by the government for terror suspect to surrender before the police two months ago, it was as good as the war had been declared. The state upped its gears in pursuit of the suspects. But what is worrying human rights groups is the fact that since then, Many young people, some described by their parents as forthright and disciplined, have since gone missing. You will find uh, incidents in Mombasa, you find incidents in Lamu, you find incidents in Malindi, you find incidents in Tana River. And these people are people uh, at their tender age who are disappearing. Now, Hakikishia, he Amri Haikutoka Hapa, Imetoka Ju. Diumana, Kila Vifo. Au watu kupotea humsiki rais wala naibu wake 
kufungwa mdomo kabisa The Kenya National Human Rights Commission and Muhuri are vowing to stop at nothing until the government gives answers to the mystery. Alikaye na kijana mwenzake wanazunguza ikaja gari papu ikawashika kwa watolea mabunduki ikampiga yule mmoja akapigwa sana. Paka kae kwa chini akakanyaga wakawashika wote wakawatia pingo kwa tena ya gari. Sisi jambo ambalo tunataka serikali ifanye ifuate sheria. Reports say some of the youths said to have gone missing were connected with last year's violence at some mosques in Mombasa, some having been labeled as notorious criminals. Akashikwa kuanzia saa tano alikuwa yuko kwa kinyozi. Akavamiwa hapo kwa kinyozi akafinikwa migunia akapakiwa kwa gari. Efforts to reach Mombasa County Commissioner Nelson Marwa for a comment on the issue did not succeed. Even as the war on terror intensifies here in the coast region, it's still nightmares and more nightmares for affected families whose sons and daughters have since disappeared mysteriously but pressure is mounting on the police to be able to give answers as to the whereabouts of the victims Francis on Tomwa KTN News Mombasa disturbing turn of events there for parents at the coast President Uhuru Kenyatta has today promoted and appointed 14 officers of the Kenya Defense Forces. Among them is Colonel Fatma Abdi, who becomes the first female brigadier in the country. He is more on that story. Little is known about her, but seen in this photo, wearing her outstanding blue uniform, is Colonel Fatuma Abdi, whose title now changes to Brigadier Fatuma Abdi. She will, however, go down in the country's history for becoming the first female brigadier in the Kenya Defense Forces. This also means that she is the highest ranking woman within the forces ranks. Her promotion comes with another responsibility, that of being the managing director of the Defense Forces Medical Insurance Scheme. Fatuma was enlisted in the Kenya Defense Forces in 1983 and served under the Women's Service Corps. Her 32 years of service has seen her appointed battalion second in command, staff officer to audit personnel and records among other duties. Her name came to the limelight after President Turu Kenyatta made postings, promotions and appointments of the officers of the Kenya Defense Forces. In a statement to newsrooms, the Ministry of Defense had listed 14 names for the new changes, among them included Major General Ngeo Mukala, posted to the Defense Staff College, appointed Commandant. Major General George Mayamba Owino, posted to the Kenya Military Academy and appointed Commandant. Brigadier Levi Franklin Mgalu, promoted to Major General and appointed to the Kenya Navy Commander. Colonel George Odiambo Walwa, promoted to Brigadier and appointed Chief of Operations. Colonel William Carissa, promoted to Brigadier and appointed Commander 6 Brigade. Colonel Henry Ofula, promoted to Brigadier and appointed Commander Kahawa Garrison. Colonel Patrick Muta Deritu, promoted to Brigadier and appointed Director, International Peace Support Training Center, among others. The President was acting on the advice of the Defense Council, chaired by Ambassador Rachel Amamo, Cabinet Secretary for Ministry of Defense. Ian Wafula, KTN News. President Uhuru Kenyatta has called on African leaders to give opposition camps a hearing ear in order for the continent to make important strides in development. Uhuru spoke at the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Conference for Africa just a day after he warned opposition leaders against undermining the democratic will of the people. Timothy Otieno with that story. The opposition itself must not exploit democratic freedoms and its legitimate platform <laughs> and must not exploit democratic freedoms and its legitimate platform to try and de to, to, to try and delegitimize government and undermine the people's will. President Uhuru Kenyatta made those remarks inside Uganda's National Assembly on Monday, apparently hitting out at opposition efforts to derail government's agenda in serving its people. But barely 24 hours later, it appears the head of state may now be dancing to a different tune. It is our duty to hear our opponents' arguments and to weigh them with an open mind. While addressing delegates from 18 countries across Africa at the 46th Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Africa Region Conference, Uhuru appeared to soften his earlier stand on the opposition. If our opponents' arguments are 
better than our own, then we should accept it and let it be. His remarks to over 400 delegates drawn from across the region will resonate with the Kenyan parliament where members from the president's jubilee coalition and the opposition court have often engaged in numerous wrangles that have sometimes threatened to derail the work of parliament. My mom, my he urged leaders to promote dialogue and tolerance in order to avert conflict and war that has plagued some African states. Multi-party democracy is not easy and can be very difficult. Let us be honest with one another, and as experience has shown us, a conflict silenced is only a conflict postponed, not a conflict resolved. The week-long conference involving legislators from the 18 countries provides a platform to discuss and analyze global issues in policy formulation at the parliamentary level. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. Good news now, a new innovation seeks to bring doctor consultation to your bedroom through the mobile phone. The SEMA Doctor Mobile Health Service seeks to reach more than 19 million subscribers in Kenya following a partnership between various stakeholders in the health sector and Safaricom. Michelle Ngele attended the launch of the service. I'd just like to say a huge thank you to our First Lady of Kenya in officiating this launch. First Lady Margaret Kenyatta officially launched the Semadoc Telemedicine. It allows patients to interact with doctors and other medical professionals through mobile technology without necessarily visiting the hospital for diagnosis. Compared to the traditional healthcare system and delivery, where the patient usually visits the doctor when sick, and at times when the ailment is highly advanced, the Semadoc system is aimed at prevention and checking of diseases at their earliest stages. What we are launching today is a clear testimony of an excellent product developed when an innovative private sector inspires and funds a creative public sector. It's a win-win situation for Kenyans. If we could provide personal health care for everyone via their mobile phone, there is a chance that we can extend the life expectancy of Africans across the board. And if we can do it via their mobile phone, even better so. And that's the vision behind Hello Doctor. Semadoc is offered by international M-Health service provider Hello Doctor in conjunction with the Central Bank of Kenya and mobile service provider Safaricom. Our premise was in the same way that mass market financial inclusion had been achieved through Mshwari, which now has about 12 million customers, it could be also used to create health inclusion. The mobile health account that... Semadoc is a subscription service available from Hello Doctor to Safaricom clients with M-Pesa accounts. To subscribe for the service, dial star 220 hash on your phone. You will be asked to set up your Semadoc PIN number. Select 1 to sign up. If you're not an Mshari customer, you'll be asked to give your name and identity number. You then need to choose how you'll send money to your Semadoc mobile health account. You can do this from either M-Pesa or Mshari. Once you've confirmed the transfer, you're officially a Semadoc subscriber. For 300 shillings per month, subscribers have 24-hour access to registered medical doctors courtesy of Hello Doctor, a health account that acts as a mobile wallet to be used to save for health-related expenses. It also gives access to health loans courtesy of the Central Bank of Kenya and a hospital cash benefit of 5,000 shillings courtesy of Canon Assurance. This will be paid out to customers who have been admitted to hospital for at least one night. Cabinet Secretary for Health James Masharia said access to basic primary health care and referral services is still a significant challenge facing the country and that the launch of Semadoc as the first commercial telemedicine service was a welcome move. I sincerely commend this initiative to innovate and transform our health care structures. This will ensure that Kenyans have access to better health care. Once again, I welcome Hero Doctor and Semadoc product and challenge other innovators to do more in order to ensure that the Kenyan population is attended to in terms of health care. According to the World Health Organization, Kenya's doctor to patient ratio stands at one doctor for every 100,000 patients. 
but for just 300 shillings a month, Semadoc gives you 24-hour access to registered medical doctors, giving you personalized and affordable medical health care just for the touch of a button. Michelle Ngale, KTN News, Nairobi. Great. Let's see how that goes. I'm sure it will save lots of lives and make such a difference. Let's now take a look at business news and I'm bringing in my colleague Abi again. Abi, what do we have in business tonight? Well, good evening, Linda. Today has been a busy day in the business world. The top story we have for you is results from Kennel Corbill. They've posted a profit after tax up by 73%. We also have some good news for residents of Mombasa where a new road is coming up near the airport, Linda. Great, Abby. We're looking forward to those stories. Of course, business news coming your way in just a bit. But for now, we're taking a short break and we're leaving you with the, the tweet of the day. Well, good evening and welcome to KTN Business. My name is Abi Agina. Fresh from posting 73% growth in net profit in the first half, oil marketer Kennel Corbill is looking for new areas to grow revenues going forward. On the cards are expansion of fuel stations, increased focus on LPG, as well as 4 billion shillings lubricant plant in Mombasa that are expected to grow profitability. I caught up with the group CEO David Ohana to get his views on the second half after posting 918 million shillings fast of profits. We continue focus on uh, high yield margins, which is the network, our wide network in uh, Kenya, but in East and Central Africa, we have over 450 service stations. So the focus was on that aspect. Yes. We are very much focused on LPG, lubricant, the non-fuel, all the restaurants you see in our service stations. Mm -hmm. So we stayed keen to focus on high yield margins. We will not attempt to capture market share. Mm -hmm. Although we were cognizant and you notice the volumes went by 8% uh, and that's what delivered the results. The main, the main driver, the main engine of the results, mm -hmm. we disciplined ourselves on the stock management. Uh, uh, inventory is a key. We are dealing with a commodity as a future price. Mm -hmm. If you don't manage it carefully, you can easily lose money in this business and I think uh, based on the results, the numbers, the 920 million uh, net profit, yes. we probably did it uh, the right way. Interesting. You've been touted as a CEO who leads with military precision. <laughs> Looking at um, your performance, um, other than fuel products, we've also seen some strong revenues coming in from LPG. How big is LPG moving forward for Canon Corbill? I think for us as a nation, for Kenya, we are getting used to this product uh, much more so we can see the usage mm -hmm. uh, getting stronger, the demand is stronger. For us it's a great uh, product, we are the biggest in terms of retail, mm -hmm. uh, sales over the service stations in supermarkets uh, of this commodity. Uh, there is a special uh, focus on that. In line with lubricants, lubricants uh, and LPG mm -hmm. going in tandem for us. Mm -hmm. You notice that recently we just signed a contract with the BP South Africa on being distributor for them for the next 10 years for Kenya, for yes. Castrol brand. Mm -hmm. So this is the high yield product that we were focusing uh, in the last few years. And it's just that we started realizing the fruits uh, out of it. Mm -hmm. Again, on the commodities which are the jet, the diesel and the gasoline, strict uh, management of the inventory. That's what helped us to achieve those results. Interesting. And um, looking at your turnaround strategy, you've also seen, um, compared to 2012, where you posted a, a losses of about 6.2 billion shillings. What were some of the lessons that you learned in okay. as far as um, cost-cutting measures and just overall efficiency at the company level? Yeah, many, many lessons. You know, it's only when you make mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, you learn. Uh, we first, in 2012, was a big story of hedging. Mm -hmm. Uh, as was cl clearly in our commentary uh, uh, by the board, uh, the board policy is the, we have a natural edge. Mm -hmm. We managed to balance the basket of uh, dollar denominated loans uh, versus the inflows of dollars we are getting uh, uh, from our customers, so it's well balanced. And 
well to catch the comprehensive interview you can log on to our website www.standardmedia.co.ke and moving on Barclays Bank of Kenya has unveiled a 30 billion shillings loan kitty to boost the financial capacity of Kenya's small and medium enterprises the loan facility is expected to enable businesses expand and make a bigger contribution to the country's fast growing economy the SME sector has been touted as Kenya's growth engine with both the public and private sector paying more attention to changing the sector's fortunes Access to funding has remained a challenge for business startups, even as banks continue to avail resources to fund expansion. The kitty is part of the Open Doors campaign the bank launched to entrench its credentials in the sector to qualify for loans from Barclays. Companies will have to have an annual turnover of 300 million shillings, as well as a proven track record of business. The SME sector accounts for close to 70% of all new jobs created in the country, with banks keen to tap the potential in the sector. Um, are saying banks don't lend. Yeah, when we go to banks, we are unable to get money. We are saying we are committing a minimum of 30 billion. As the business grows, that number could become bigger. The difference is this is our balance sheet we're committing, our commitment that we are not just going to be a corporate bank or we're not just going to be a retail bank. Well, indeed, some good news there for SMEs in case you are interested in applying for a loan. Well, moving on to Mombasa, work has begun for the expansion of the road linking Changamwe to the busy Bo International Airport in Mombasa County. The six billion shilling project is seen as, a, as the key to unlock traffic snarlaps that have characterized the stretch. Kitchens Francis Ontomo, <coughs> I beg your pardon, with that report from Mombasa. Such are the scenes that have characterized the road leading to the busy Moi International Airport from Changamwe. Traffic jams have become the order of the day. Any time traffic comes to a complete stop, an age-long headache that has occasioned the birth of an ambitious project that targets to settle the dust down. We are improving it to provide for two lanes dedicated for traffic headed to the airport and uh, two lanes dedicated to traffic getting out of the airport. The expansion is expected to coincide with the construction of a new bath at the port of Mombasa that will see more efficient cargo transport to and from the northern corridor. Critics have time and again poured cold water to efforts geared at expanding the port without a corresponding upgrading of infrastructure. Approximately it will take you 45 minutes to fly from Nairobi to Moi International Airport here in Mombasa. But sickly enough, it may take you much longer to travel by road from the airport to Mombasa town, a distance of just 10 kilometers. Kwanza jana ndio ilini iudhi zaidi sana, manake nilika kwa jamu na nigari moja. Situnapelekaga gari kuenda towni, upatue shilingi miatatu. Gari moja jana nimeshinda nayo kwa jamu, paka usiku. And the project is not finding the easy landing for those directly affected by the planned construction. The compensation scheme is something the highways authorities are still figuring which way. Uh, we have already engaged the National Land Commission officials who have come to the ground. Uh, they have talked to the affected persons. Uh, they have done the evaluation. Contracting companies China Wu Yi and Howard Humphreys East Africa are working as partners of the project expected to end in a year. Francis Ontomwa, KTN News, Mombasa. Well, many thanks there, Francis Ontomo. Let's take a look at how the financial markets perform today. And with the financial report, that brings us to the end of our business news for today. Well, do join me tomorrow for more business news. And of course, tomorrow we'll be keeping an eye on how Cooperative Bank will be performing as it releases its financial report. Coming up next is sports.
time for KTN Sports. My name is Lynn Washira. And even with the World Athletics Championships coming in under 10 days, focus is still on the rampant doping allegations that have hit the sport. The International Association of Athletics Federation has announced that disciplinary action has been initiated against 28 athletes after following a retest of samples from the 2005 and 2007 World Championships where they found adverse findings. In a statement posted on its website, the World Athletics Governing Body said it could not name the 28 yet due to the legal process. A large majority of the 28 are said to be retired, while some are athletes who have already been sanctioned and only very few remain active in sport. IEF also confirmed that none of them will be competing in Beijing. The 2005 event was staged in Helsinki with Osaka, Japan hosting two years later. The 2015 World Championships start in the Chinese capital Beijing on August 22nd. And switching gears now, Dallas Sevens winner Stop Fry Nakuru have been seeded uh, top as the National Sevens circuit enters uh, the third leg with the Driftwood Sevens set to go down in Mombasa on the 22nd and 23rd of this month. Elsewhere, rally stakeholders in the country hope that the improvement uh, made in this year's championship is a step closer towards realizing the dream of getting back the world rally status. This year's Driftwood Sevens tournament is expected to see a change of venue from the traditional Mombasa Sports Club to the Mbaraki Stadium due to what has been termed as the club grounds unavailability. After the last weekend win at the Dallas Sevens tournament, Top Fry Nakuru have been seeded top at the third stop of the National Sevens Series circuit. Wanyore headline Pool A alongside Mwamba, Cabras, Sugar and Comras. Christie Sevens winners Kenya Harlequins are in Pool B together with Total Nondis, Western Bulls and Catholic Monks. In Pool C, defending Driftwood's champions homeboys will square it out with Strathmore Leos, Black Blood and Kisi RFC. Defending National Series champions KCB on the other hand are in a relatively easy pull D alongside Impala, Daystar and Kisumu RFC. Meanwhile, rally stakeholders in the country hope the improvements made in this year's championships is a step closer towards realizing their dream of getting back the world rally status. After the Machakos rally last weekend, action moves to Nakuru. WRC pull out of, um, of, of, of the Kenyan rally. Um, we've seen a lot of, a lot of the loss of, of in terms of you know, psych and the drive of people coming back. Elsewhere, military side Ulinzi Stars are ready to defend their title in the forthcoming East Africa military games that kick off on Saturday the 15th in Uganda. Ulinzi, however, plays the FC Leopards in a Kenya Premier League tie on Wednesday. We are lucky that we are the defending champion, so maybe we'll have a, uh, a tough time because everybody will be coming for us. But uh, all teams, you can say that are equal to, the, to, to give a challenge. Finally, Postal Corporation of Kenya continued to dominate in the 36th edition of Kekoso Games where they beat Kenya Civil Aviation Authority 4-1. Communications Authority, on the other hand, beat Kenya Force Authority 2-0. Ministry of Information, Communication and Technology basketball men thrashed out Kenya Force Authority 71-62, while Postal Corporation of Kenya was beaten by Kenya Civil Aviation 53-46. Kenya Civil Aviation Authority volleyball team beat Ministry of Information, Communication and Technology three sets to nil, as Postal Corporation of Kenya beat Kenya Air Force Authority 3-0. Well, despite an impressive 2015 javelin season that saw Julius Siego break the African record at the Birmingham Diamond League, the Commonwealth champion is not targeting a big throw at the forthcoming World Athletics Championships, but rather a podium finish. I'm doing my own training. and I always want to be number one. I've never liked maybe to be to come after number one. Mm -hmm. And I really feel bad when I'm, maybe I'm not winning. And, uh, but of course, in sports, you, I came to realize that uh, in sports you need to be ready to, for anything to happen. Like in athletics, you win or you come second or last. So, but of course, nobody else will want to be last. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but for me, I really want, always when I'm doing my own training, no, I really wish and hope that uh, I always win. Mm -hmm. Like for this one, as we go for this, if it will come, of course, I will accept it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you never know when a big throw comes. Yeah, you never know. Like in uh, my 91 that came, 
in the, during my last throw, the sixth throw. So, of course, yeah, if I'm in good shape, I thought if I feel good, if I feel good, I can try to make a big one. But uh, this is championship. I'm not just trying to maybe make big throws. Mm. You know, you can make 85 and win the championship. Yeah, winning is winning. And uh, sometimes, uh, like, distances, they come alone. All the best to Julia Siego in Beijing. Well, the Kenya School Advent of Adventure and Leadership held its annual extreme sports challenge over the weekend, with organizers hoping that the games will create awareness, cohesion, and team building. Members of, of particip of, uh, or participants rather, were required to go through various obstacles. Hassan Juma attended the event and filed the following report. It began with a small warm-up and the usual running before the team sport that involves teamwork was introduced. Participants had to go through barriers, go over walls, go through assassin's tunnel. Marky Waters and rolled down as their colleagues cheered them on. There are those who are faster but to be slowed by their colleagues. After all, it was a team effort. At the end of it all, it was exhausting, energy sapping, and participants, even fans, got dirty. The biggest challenge was first to get up to the hill and then coming back, taking the log. It was not that hard, but uh, you can't run alone. It's a team. I didn't know I could go that far. I, my, my, my brain quit a thousand times. We didn't expect this kind of stuff, but yeah, we did it. The organizers were impressed by the hard roads this year and are already thinking of putting more challenges next time. They have worked in their teams, and uh, we have seen uh, the kind of spirit people can have when you set them free. They really get excited and that uh, um, enthusiasm that comes out of them. Kenya School of Adventure and Leadership hope such sports will be used to market the country to the outside world. We need events that uh, can be able to be spectated because some people can do it and then they want to, can, to tag along their, uh, their beloved ones to come and see. And when the, the others are spectating, they also think, ah, I should join in. Hassan Juma, KTN Sports. Well, it looks tough, but it's something that I would really love to do. And that's how we wrap up tonight's edition of KTN Sports. Be sure to join us tomorrow right here for another comprehensive edition of KTN Sports. Have a good night. I'm Lynn Washira. KTN Weather in association with more team do Mama has Motin Doom, which makes mosquitoes go away and not come back the whole night. So you get a peaceful night's sleep all night long. Motin Doom. A peaceful night is a Motin Doom night. So should African presidents be allowed to rule for life? That was a big question tonight. Menambui says absolutely not. Democracy is better advanced by strong institutions, not strong men and women. Chitai Marabula says term limits are an integral, integral part of democracy. No president is too good for retirement. Victor Diambo says they should not be allowed to rule for life since no constitution in Africa has such a clause. Um, the poll results there on your screen. Should African presidents be allowed to rule for life? And that's why we leave it on KTN Prime. Thank you so much uh, for staying with us and indeed for watching, for being part of it. Remember, Worldview continues, begins rather, on KTN News. We're having a conversation about rape and we're asking you tonight, if your daughter, your niece, your neighbor who is between 3 to 12 was raped, would you keep quiet?
would you go to the authorities? What if you come from these societies where elders sit down and decide the penalties for the offenders? What would you do? What options are there for you? And we have stories from different countries that sort of tell you that this is not just a Kenyan problem. It's not an African problem. It's time we have this conversation and look for a way out. Our hashtag tonight in this conversation is Worldview. Let's start this conversation because it ultimately affects all of us. Have a good night.